and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that past. You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. In our lives come and establish certain things for us that we'll have to run up and down this year trying to establish them come and carry out a work of restitution in the life of everyone this morning we yield ourselves to your leadership to your direction to your ministry you are the one that take whatever Jesus has purchased for us on the cross and make it real in our lives we honor you. We thank you. No, no one will live here the same. And no stone will be left untouched. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. You may be seated. Proverbs chapter 6. There is a principle in scripture called the law of restitution the law of restitution i want to explain it in a few minutes and then we can apply it the law of restitution was put there by god for two reasons but since man fell since sin came into the world god understood um, that sin has been the major tool for robbing god's people the second is certain when people sometimes get into wrongdoing and this law came into operation long before jesus came to die on the cross and then after he died it was even enhanced there are two reasons why people get robbed people lose opportunities sometimes wonderful things that god has blessed them with and then something goes wrong and they lose it sometimes they lose finances there are seven major areas of restitution it happens in finances it happens in health it happens in relationship marriage and the rest of it it happens in ministry it happens in business and so on and so forth now the devil the, the, the two major reasons why things go wrong and people lose big time one is because of sin you can see why adam lost the garden the moment he ate the forbidden fruit he was kicked out the second is because of Satan. Satan steals. He's a thief. He's a liar and he's a thief. Those are the two businesses he do. 419 and arm robbery. He makes a living by robbing people. He steals. He's a thief. He robs. As a thief, he comes unawares. That's what he does most of the time. Because he doesn't like being caught. He comes on our ways. He comes on notice. He comes behind and remove things from your life. And then he will do it so well so you end up blaming other people for it. The reason he succeeds most of the time is because people hardly catch him. So I can announce to you right now. If you look at 2009, and the years that have passed there is a spiritual thief behind every bad thing that has happened to you somebody died in your family and you're wondering why lord something went wrong your job something happened you lost a lot of money something happened the car god blessed you with just like that there there is a spiritual thief that's behind that 
the law of restitution was put in motion so he can be caught and made to pay back. That law enforces justice on your behalf. And we're going to put it into motion now. And anywhere I put it into motion, you see opportunities have been lost start coming back. You see things, people that their heart has been broken, they've lost a relationship, all of a sudden, new flowers of love blossom again. The only thing is that you must understand some of the keys to restitution. For example, when it comes to love, you don't stay in bitterness and expect restitution. It doesn't work that way. I will show you a few of the keys. The scripture gave seven of them, but I mentioned a few of them. So there, are, there is the law of restitution put there in the Bible on your behalf. It's a law of vindication. It's a law of justice for somebody that has been robbed or cheated. The second reason God put the law into motion is that when his people fall or lose opportunities because of sin, God decreed that it shouldn't be permanent. The day that man repents, God restores back to him the years that the canker worm has eaten, the opportunities that he has lost, and all the things that has gone wrong. God commands that everything be restored back to him. You know, yesterday I, I alluded a little to the prodigal son. If you remember, the prodigal son wanted a lower positioning with his father. He wanted to be a servant instead of a son because he messed up, he messed up big time. But the father is not like that. Mm -mm, it, it, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Even wrongdoing does not cancel it. Once there is repentance, God restores back everything. And then, another thing again about the law of restitution, because of God's justice, is that he decreed that whenever you undergo restitution, or whenever restitution is carried out on your behalf, it must never restore you back to what you used to be. The least is, min is the minimum is double of what you used to be. According to God, part of the reason is to pay you for the pains you've gone through. Part of the reason is to pay you for the time you have lost. Part of the reason is to pay you for all the frustration. So the minimum, according to me, is double. But the maximum is sevenfold. So between double and sevenfold, you can decide. Sometimes certain things happen, I go for maximum restitution. I go for maximum. You can't convince me of anything less. Apart from that, I know the, the law. And it, it, these are court cases. These are issues about court. Satan is the accuser of the brother who goes to prosecute you in the court. We should also become, <laughs> we should become intercessors. We should become advocates. We should, become, we should understand how to plead our case. How to argue our case before God and get justice. There is a court that is governing this universe. It always tilts on the side of justice. But the just must plead his case. If nobody speaks for him, he can be robbed of justice. That's why prayer is given. That's one of the seven purposes of prayer. It's opportunity for you to talk for yourself and get justice. And always understand that whenever you start speaking up, there is an advocate that takes up the case from where you start. But no lawyer can defend a person without your voice. Because there will be an opportunity to put you on the witness box. No matter what the lawyer has said. Lawyer has said, tell them you are not guilty. You go there and say, I'm guilty. If you are contradicting your advocate, you mess up your case. There is somebody already hired by God the Father to defend you. Even when you are wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even when you committed an offense. And the amazing thing about him is that he died for sinners. He didn't die for the righteous so his job his ministry his his legal profession is just to get sinners out of problem it's just to get people who don't qualify that's part of what we're talking about grace the high priestly ministry of jesus his advocacy ministry his uh being put there by god as a solicitor and you don't have to pay legal fees the father has paid it all believe me some cases can be very costly but he can't help you without your testimony before the court if you say nothing you make him fail Satan will have the upper hand because he's talking if you contradict him so you have to know the provisions he has made available in the world for you 
and because it talks in line with the word you know grace has wiped out every charge that is against you you have to understand those things so you can go in line you have to know why god is just in justifying a sinner justification means declared not guilty what makes a just god just in declaring somebody that did something not guilty because that's unjust if a lawyer sets somebody kills comes to your family and kills people you take the person to court and the judge discharges the person and declares him no guilty that's, that's injustice but the scripture said in romans chapter 3 that he is just and the justifier of them they believe in jesus christ uh, another scripture in first john chapter 1 verse 9 said if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin god will be unjust not to forgive you i don't think you heard what i said if you say lord i'm sorry that i did something and he still wants you to suffer for it in 2010 god becomes an unjust god because he has to apologize to jesus for all he suffered i don't think you heard what i said the reason god is just in justifying you is that somebody has already suffered for your sins that's why you are not going to hell because somebody has gone to hell for you that's why sickness will not kill you because somebody has borne your sickness that's why or anything Satan brings now is illegal if you don't know these rights you let him maltreat you oppress you do all sorts of things to you and you'll be inside saying you know i don't even know why god is punishing me god is not punishing you my friend there is now no condemnation to them that are in christ jesus that's grace that's what you have to understand that grace has given you a right in the courts of justice can i hear you say amen? amen satan has no right to prosecute you anymore then, then, then we have to start the whole process of what did you kill jesus for why did you whip his back why did he suffer all those things what did he do to deserve that everybody agreed he was sinless so what did you suffer what, what all those all those bruises he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him by his stripes we are healed you have taken him you have bruised him i'm free when i'm with my lawyer i tell him the truth i i, I made this mistake i i did this but he said, when you get to court, declare, say, you are not guilty. They say, are, are you not the one? He said, I'm not the one. So the one you're talking about died. Because when he took my place on the cross, he actually was executed as a criminal. But it was me. He said, now take my place on earth. Speak like me. Be bold in my righteousness. Your righteousness is my righteousness. You have a right standing with God righteousness in the new testament is not right living it is right standing i need to say it a second time because that's where many of you are getting into trouble so because you may not have done certain things right you think you have lost your standing with god righteousness in the new covenant is not right living it is right standing but the way god worked it out is that right standing always produces right living god doesn't demand you doing certain things for you to have done this or done that before he calls you righteous no he gave it to you as a gift knowing that when you have a white garment you'll be careful where you sit on that's what god did he didn't say make yourself white then you are now righteous mm -mm. he gave it to you as a free gift it's a gift of grace you have been justified <laughs> you've been declared not guilty no accusation against you is accepted in the sight of god there is now no condemnation that's why he said they overcame him by the blood what is meaning that the cross is a secret of silencing satan if you know what happened on the cross you can silence him every time he has no case against you because all the case he had he has discharged do you know the anger of god was discharged on christ so he can be shifted away from you Somebody has taken your place in judgment. It's your turn to be blessed. I say it's your turn to be blessed. Amen. I say it's your turn to be blessed. Amen. You can't stop me from being blessed, no matter what you like. You can something you can do about my case. My case is Satan's biggest headache. He can't do anything. He said, I caught him. No, he didn't catch anything. I have caught you today. No, 
You can't catch two thieves on the same product. Say, so you caught me doing what? Stealing this mic. What did you catch Jesus doing? The day I read a couple of scriptures that said that Jesus' death bought me eternal redemption. Everyone say eternal redemption. He didn't just die to take care of my sins of today. He died to take care of today and for eternity. So don't say I made mistake with this general. Eh, all mistakes have been taken care of. I don't think you heard what I'm saying. The way Jesus paid is, is that he overpaid for your deeds. God has given an injunction. He said, sell this man, sell his houses, sell everything. He said, how much is he owing the court? How much is he owing justice? He said, one million naira. Jesus said, okay. For my love for him, I'll do something. He comes down, steps in in between, and pays your debt. That's grace. That's mercy. That's forgiveness. He paid your debt. But then he now turns and said, one million is what is owing you. And I calculated that this was a problem cost in just one year. So let me dash him 1,000 years to live. That would mean about 1,000 1, millions. That's 1 billion. So let me give you 10 billion extra. I open an account, keep it there. Anything he will ever owe. Anything, any deficit that will ever be a clue to this man. I don't want to see you set down and your group go into his house to do any prosecution. Anything he will ever owe, go to this account and collect. That's why the scripture said, calls, calls it unsearchable riches. It cannot be exhausted, not by you. Let me even ask you Do you think Jesus died 2010? When did he die? It's 2000 years ago. How come the one that is going to stand up now to give his life to Christ is covered? What about the last person that will give his life to Christ before the rapture is covered? How can a deposit 2,000 years ago is still rich enough, enough whatever in the account, to pay for? Do you know how many millions of people that have been covered? Do you know how many millions are still coming to? And it's still, 2,000 years after, it's still covered. The reason is because if you go to the scripture, it said it's eternal redemption. He, pay, he paid for the past, he paid for the present, he paid for the future. This is the part that once we get to somebody say, hey, even if it's true, don't say it to let some people get bored to start sinning. No. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the antidote to sin. It's like HIV, they don't have a cure. Then I find the cure and I come here and I'm holding a conference to let you know there is not a cure. The cure for HIV is not a license to go and get it. It's an intervention for those who have it. Because if you know how deadly the stuff is, you know why we need a cure. So if you know how deadly sin is, <laughs> you know why God has provided a cure. Grace is the cure for sin. And it's grace that frees people from sin. We might get to explain that later. You see, if there is anything that is overpowering you, there is also a, a secret for escaping it getting out of it you don't get people freed through condemnation you get their bondage you make their bondage stronger through that so I just laid this foundation before we discuss Satan so that you don't you know I know I lost that uh, opportunity because I also fumbled yes that's why God put restitution for you so the day your eye opens you don't just start again all over again no you can recover lost opportunities i'm sure you have read that scripture i will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten and the only condition he put there is repentance and then demanding for restitution the first law of restitution is always repentance because there are many cases of restitution that wrongdoing was involved in before God, don't say, I'm not guilty when you are. It's the only way you can tell the truth. But before the real prosecutor, you have no business with him. He has been paid. Overpaid. 
he has taken the son of God and God allowed it so he can absolve his sons he took the first son so that the other ones will be free maybe I should show you this it will help this prosecution that we're about to do here because in a few minutes we're going to sentence somebody turn the criminal into chains and once we put him there he can't interfere with that area of your life again are you getting what I'm saying you're going to get a very mighty injunction against Satan you're going to obtain justice this morning but but check out this this is grace Romans chapter 5 verse 17 you see, that one sin is confessed, God is faithful and just. God will be unjust if he doesn't forgive a believer that has repented. Why? What are you looking for again? The claim of justice has been satisfied on the cross. All the evidence are still here. Okay. By one man's offense, death or Satan reigned. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. The key to reigning over circumstances, reigning over Satan, dominating over anything that is coming against you, there are two of them mentioned there. One is revelation of grace. The other is understanding of righteousness. Not the deeds of righteousness, the gift right these two things are free gifts that came to you from the cross not the deed of righteousness you don't beat satan by deed you beat him by gifts of righteousness grace is god's unmerited god's undeserved favor because many of you were not properly trained in that you have gone through your christian life with a lot of struggles trying to earn your way into God's presence, trying to merit everything. And that's what has created a struggle in your faith, a struggle that sometimes you try and try. It looks like this thing is too hard. If you see how the faith life is such a struggle for some people, stop struggling to believe. Faith is not a struggle. There's no struggle in it. Verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation you know one man and them and then all of us are suffering in that same way by the righteousness of one the free gift the free gift of justification the free gift of grace the free gift of righteousness came upon all men unto justification you have been declared not guilty do you know the word justification there's a lawyer here he can tell you that when the court uses another word for it, if you turn to your additional justification, one of the words you see there is acquitted. They know what it means when a judge declares a person. <laughs> he said, all cases against you, you are acquitted of all charges, of all accusation, of all blame. Justification means you are declared not guilty. Justification means all churches are thrown away and you are declared as if you have never seen it before that's what the death of christ did for us by the righteousness by the righteousness of one man not by the righteousness of all of us it's not like by your own righteousness you are now justified no let me ask you how many of you were there when adam was eating the apple when the serpent gave him apple and he ate how come you're suffering for what Adam did? Come to your family. Some families are paying big time for ancestral sins. Why are you suffering for what does not concern you? The same way it applies. You know, if, no matter how good you live your life, you are still a sinner. That's why when you go to preach the gospel, you even understand that. You tell the man, ah, we are all sinners, so... A person that has never had a boyfriend, a person that has never stolen before, a person that has never done all this, even a young girl that has lived a clean life, you tell her we are all sinners, you need Jesus to. Why are you telling her that she's a sinner? What did she do? You say, ah, when man Adam sinned, all of us fell. You understand that? How come you don't understand the opposite? The other, the redemptive plan. That the second Adam now has come, he has obeyed God. 
they tempted him he was without sin because he met all the conditions he has also transferred that to everyone that believes in him why are you finding it hard accepting that you are righteous in christ that you have been dead. why are you finding it hard it's a big it's hard but you find it easy to accept the negative side the one adam did why are you finding it hard the way adam sin became your sin and brought the consequences of sin on all men that's how the righteousness of christ has brought justification and redemption to all everyone that believes everyone that believes look at the next verse 19 for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one not by your own now many were made what lift up your hands and say i'm i'm righteous not by my own works but by jesus obedience say i'm justified because of what he did for me on the cross say it satan you have no case against me it's not just for 2010 no you have no case against me for life i i i see fresh air is going to come so much to you that you are going to find your love for jesus come alive again you're going to find your passion for god come alive again you're going to find this apathy in christianity leave you yeah, but we're living in the last days i don't have these symptoms of the last days it doesn't you can't because i have found where the secret is the hiding place is in the cross of jesus christ so that the economy is shaking the president is sick i'm an international citizen the world is my parish what is your commission go into what all the world that means no nation can reject you visa stop stop grow your mind my friend internal affairs jesus takes care of look at how we are addressing everything he has done for us external affairs all the things have, having to do with unbelievers all the things having to do with the world different people from different nations is your business if you don't intervene they will perish you are god's foreign secretary you've been sitting idle for too long that's why your budget comes back every year unspent i do maximum utilization of budgets but i don't do misappropriation anyway <laughs> maximum utilization because there's so much to do i even apply for second budget sometimes so the thing finish and you can see evidence of the good works we're doing give us more and the father says that's exactly what i'm talking about god's budget is not based on austerity it's based on abundance if god operates austerity measure you can't be breathing oxygen the way you are doing it. you can see how it's everywhere rainfall will not be falling the way it's falling it will just be releasing it in measure you say rain has fallen in abuja this january we're not going to be supplying new rain till august because these things are scarce resources that has to be this uh, remember we have mexico to give rain we have us we have you know indonesia we have south africa nigerians should not just think this one that has come this january abuja people should get ready the next is august by august let's pray that there will be enough in the coffers of government now now that you have taken three intake of oxygen don't look for another one for the next three days because we are rationing this oxygen god is not like that it's as big as your lungs are you go to the ocean you see how he made the water is how what, what is the size of your bucket are you coming with fill my cup or fill my bucket or are you coming with tanker somebody said i don't have tank i have well god said feel it the ocean does not know how much water you took because the system of god has his imbued power to replenish as you are drinking water god is collecting his tax without you knowing because every now and then you go to urinate that's tax 20 percent revenue so you are collecting vegetables apple is collecting his poopoo because all those poopoo you throw away now now apple and popo and mango you we'll send them back to the ground so we can so the system is just going it's no it's nothing like scarcity in god's system 
God is a God of abundance. But he's also interested in stewardship. That you must manage well what is in your hand for him to. Not because of scarcity, but because we are raised to be kings. We are raised to govern. Now, all I've tried to do is to provide you the constitutional background for your justification. So, if you don't know the provisions, the devil can talk you out of your inheritance. You can see. Don't try to speak before Satan about righteousness based on your own self. Always remember that in Christianity, we glory on the finished work of Christ, not on what we attain. That's what can defeat you. When you start talking about the cross, he said to overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb doesn't mean always say blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. It doesn't mean that. You should know what happened on the cross. The death and resurrection of Christ. That's what he's talking about. The cross. Not the emblem. Of. You should know the transaction that took place there. That's what you use. And then you give testimony to it. When you speak it out, the devil bows. Okay, let's look at the law of restitution for a few minutes. Let me show you two provisions. I don't have the time. There are a couple of records, but let's speak to and... And, and, and apply it immediately proverbs chapter 6 maximum restitution i want to show you maximum then i'll show you minimum and i'll show you everything in between then um, we can implement maximum restitution proverbs 6 30 31 men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he's hungry you know when thieves are hungry they break into your house and just collect a widow and a mara or just serve themselves a plate of rice or prefer with the meat in your soup you know those kind of things collect six cups of gary men normally but god said because he's still another person's property if he be caught look at the next verse what you need to underline is if he be caught this translation said if he be found that's if he's identified underline it the whole law of restitution is predicated on that one statement the devil stole for you is not enough the thief stole for you is not enough the question is have you been able to identify who stole the law of restitution first requirement of the law of restitution is to successfully identify the thief then he can be made to, to pay back no court can enforce restitution unless the prosecutor identifies who stole or who cheated him or who robbed him do you know satan has been getting away for too long nobody is prosecuting that's the problem a few that are trying to do that don't know the law the provisions other ones have not been able to identify the thief i'll tell you what is going on how he escapes so the key is if he be found if you can identify him he shall restore sevenfold he shall give all the substance of his house hmm. there are people that get injunction satan cannot harass them again till they're out of this earth do you know there are people like that this devil that is going about now harassing people there are some other people he can't touch till they finish this work for example job succeeded in getting it job was living on earth jesus had not died but satan can't cross job's house because it of touching him touching his children job got got double restitution and got a permanent injunction on satan because Nahum 9 said affliction shall not come a second time you need to know some of those constitutional provisions oh. if you have suffered certain things before you need to be able to pull it out pull the case lord see the evidence in the realm of the spirit evidences are open the same way when you do something wrong satan can go and start talking but the blood of jesus destroys all his charges that's how anything you have suffered the evidences are clear is somebody hearing what i'm saying if he be found he shall restore sevenfold exodus chapter 22 verse 1 
he shall give all the substance of his house. If a man steals an oxen, now we are, there are seven types of restitution. Some are material, some are spiritual, some are relationship, some are you know business, or some are in ministry. The biggest losses are spiritual. Somebody you used to prophesy before, when last did you prophesy? You don't even know they've stolen your gift. Somebody used to be very anointed. Where is it? Somebody used to have ability to see into the future and know certain things. When last did God talk to you? You are now seeing monkeys and you, you are now swimming in the water. That's what you do in the night. And you have not cried for restoration. But the scripture also talks about restoration of the spirit, of the anointing. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And with that outpouring, I will restore to you the years that they can come. And nobody is talking about. The things, their greatest assets are spiritual. What makes Joseph a prime minister? One gift called prophetic wisdom. is the highest gift in the Bible. It's higher than working on miracles. It's higher than... If people know that you hear from God accurately for yourself and for others, you become a multi-millionaire in a short while. That's why the prophets in the Old Testament are celebrities. And yet, some, even some of the people who come to them hate them all, but they come. Because their eyes can see. And some of you used to have it. You tell your family that this is going to happen and happen. Now, what? Well, you are now a blind bat. And you have not cried for restitution. Meanwhile, if you seek for restitution, that gift will move to another dimension. It won't come the same measure. It will come in a deeper measure. Many of you have suffered different things because the different giftings God gave you is no more functioning. And you are just going about normal like a disarmed soldier just walking like a civilian where are your equipment where are your anointing some of you when you say something it happens where is it some of you are so crippled by fear now where is your gift of faith that you used to operate you gave your life to christ and god decorated you with certain things where, where are they a, 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 you know the, the 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 biggest losses are spiritual what made joseph a prime minister Give the word of wisdom. He's able to provide solution to problems by prophetic insights. There is also prophetic knowledge, but the prophetic wisdom is higher because he, he, go, he, he shows the future and shows solution to problems. It wasn't Harvard University degree that made him the prime minister and put him in charge of the economy. Look at gift of healing. Gift of healing will turn around your life if you will take it serious. Some of you, I feel the fire in my hand, but you are playing with your gift. You are hiding it. You don't know. Let it become established because you will be doing it. More people will be giving testimony. After a while, it becomes known. Once you are known that you have it, your headache is over. You can't carry the healing anointing and be poor. You don't know what the gift is. You don't know what it is. There are some of you that have the gift of faith. Once you declare something, when it comes on you, you just know you can believe anything. You can believe for anything. The things that people call problems don't look serious to you. There is this believability inside you. Once he lifts, you're like a normal person. But it comes because it's a spiritual gift. You get into prayer. You get into... It, it, it activates. And whatever you declare, it happens. And you are, you are just hiding it, sitting on it. Open up a cell group. Start from there. As you meet more people's need, it will be spreading. The Bible said, and his fame went abroad. That's how it happened to Jesus. It will not spread until people are being affected by what you are carrying. Your scripture said, the kings shall come to your light. And nation, when we kings start respecting you, you have to understand the conditions in those prophecies. Don't just say, meet those conditions. One of the seven conditions is that you must arise and start shining arise and shine for your light has come not that it will come start using what you have one of the conditions is you know the spirit of the lord god is upon me pay the price and get the anointing on your head because he has anointed me start using it 
somewhere along the line start commanding the respect of people in authority i don't care what career you are into do your career but do the calling that jesus christ gave you don't throw away your calling because of your career or your calling will take you where that career will never take you is whenever you embrace that call the world becomes your parish your calling will deliver you from being a local champion the man steals an oxen a sheep and kills it or sells it he shall restore five oxen for an oxen those who are pastors should take note of that you can see you lose an oxen an oxen is a pastor or a worker in the church a sheep is a member when paul said thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that thresh out the corn he was not talking about church members he was talking about church workers pastors and leaders he said when god wrote about oxen and these laws he was not talking about animals even though in the literal in the literal sense if you're an animal farmer it applies he was talking about laborers in the kingdom so you can see five pastors for one that you lose and four sheep for each person that lives a pastor must learn to demand for that and call but if not you leave certain will scatter you verse the next verse if a thief be found breaking up there is always the requirement in this law that he must be found breaking up and he is smitten that he died there shall no blood be shed for him i always warn ministers about this one because he applies to ministry the same way he applies in the in law you know if if somebody is breaking into my house and i shoot at him or kills him i'm not charged for murder but that's how it is in ministry those who preach don't go to another man's pulpit a mess he has right to do anything he likes to you a pastor has authority to protect the flock a lot of people are not trained so they don't understand this i have seen ministries close be careful what you do with other people's pulpit when somebody trusts you with their pulpit church is family just like it is a lot of people don't know it's family or don't steal sheep people can leave other ministries and come to church there's nothing wrong with that but don't go and break another man's fence and start destroying what god has given him to do especially when they entrust pulpit in your hand it works even within one ministry like even this ministry is one even if it's another pastor of the ministry that comes you don't come and weaken the hand of what the man you strengthen what he's doing no matter what it is and you know there's something about sheep the, you know when you have a visiting minister they like to go talk talk to the man tell him things so some people can hear what the man know and they, they they can decide to use such a thing it will come against your ministry it will come and it's, it's fivefold for every pastor you confuse for every sheep you confuse is four so multiply the number you know the that level of damage you're going to suffer from 30,000 to 200 people that's finally he had to die because he, he spent about a couple of years believing for restoration speaking but it didn't work because there there is there are conditions for restitution there are conditions for restitution if you have gone to destroy another person's relationship that girl was love was blossoming for her you went to meet the guy to tell him ah this prostitute in abuja is that who you want to man be careful about destroying your brethren be careful about talking about other people's negatives your day will come on the door opportunity will just be coming something will just come up be careful about that if i have issues with you i tell you that's where i'm very deadly you can't intimidate me i talk to you but that is where it ends you don't go behind and start talking about the person you don't do that 
you should be able to die with people's secrets if not you're not a faithful person that's that's how god is treating you now can you imagine him sharing with everybody what some of the things you have confessed to him but the scripture says we should confess our faults one to another that means if somebody is going through a challenge you should be able to walk up to your brother and say this is what is going on i'm having this challenge in my office my secretary and you know my wife i love my wife please help me brother help me in these three days let's and the brother will cancel him and pray with him and strengthen him and he overcomes that and tomorrow he goes to say madam ah if there is need to tell his wife he's the best person to do the talking don't go and start giving and be the serpent in the garden of eden so you see people who destroy other people's relationship and now something is going wrong restitution in that case begins with repentance if there's no repentance so telling satan shut up and all that will not work i'm here not to condemn you i'm here to help you get things back can i hear an amen to that amen. yes if you ruin a fellow christian that fellow christian also has access to justice the bible said the lord judges among the saints why do you judge unjustly for ye have said ye are gods all ye are the children of the most high but because of this injustice and other you shall die like men, men for they know not they understand not so the whole course of the earth is put out of order no won't be like that i've made up my mind for myself if a pastor is going through challenge i help him restore his work restore him restore his people that's what i do i'm a fan of the body of christ jesus told me he said anybody that loves me must show it to the church because the church is my bride he said the same way if somebody tells you that he loves you he believes in you but he is destroying pastor sarah the same way you know that he's fake that's how nobody can have allegiance to me and be destroying the church remember it is written it is better for that man to be born not to be born and to be the one that caused one of these little ones that believe in me to stop don't because of your emotional problem maybe you're being hurt you start destroying what you're destroying is not him you are destroying christ can anybody use knife and be cutting off your leg and your hand and not claim to be destroying you he said after all the real you is inside no your body is part of you the body of christ is part of him we are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bones if you don't want god's problem don't meddle with his church i'm a fan of the church i protect the church i defend the church just like i defend the gospel because it's the closest thing to god's heart is what he sacrificed his son for these are the redeemed these are the people he has purchased out it's like the, the nation of israel in the old testament you can't touch that nation god will kill you he said they are the apple of his eyes that's how the church is when i say the church i'm not just talking about denomination i'm talking about you the saints god's people don't be the one that caused one of the people that jesus died for to stumble there are things you should never say because it can cause other people and you know some of these things come up they they create misunderstanding some some get very de destroyed perception of christianity some about jesus some about pastors some about this be careful what you do be careful don't for meat of a drink destroy god's work because the this law of recession works for or it can also work against you don't take the side that the thief takes because he can work against you even to the point of leveling all the substance of your house think you can meddle with the church say anything you like talk about anybody you like there is government in the church oh. jesus is the head of the church next verse he shall make full restitution if he has nothing there he shall be sold for his theft go on verse 4 if the theft be certainly found in his hand alive whether it be oxen or she, as or she he shall restore double go on 
If a man shall cause a field, this is another one. Don't put fire in another person. Okay, this one is being eaten. Cause a field of vineyard to be eaten. And shall put in his beast. Shall feed in another man's field. Of the best of his own field. And of the best of his own vineyard shall he make. Pastors should be careful. Business people should be careful. People who have different institutions they've set up should be careful. Go destroy another person's work. You pay for it. You pay for it. <laughs> verse. Look at the next verse. If fire break out and catch in tons, so that the stalks of corn, standing corn of the field, be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire. Don't do that either. Do you know what it means that somebody has worked so hard, planted a whole vineyard, it could be a minister, it could be a group of the harvest time, when it's time for them to reap, fire breaks out and burns off the man's level. You know what is fire? Gossip. You know what he's talking about? Somebody who starts a rumor or a gossip or something that ends up destroying another man's. That's what he's talking about. The person, that person, that person deal with a person who doesn't know the law maybe you get away with it deal with somebody like me i don't ask for double law i ask for maximum restitution oh you don't don't cross my area because i'm trained in this thing i'm a solidly trained person in this station ah yeah yeah started fire to burn another person's vineyard don't do that please that your mouth can kindle fire that your tongue don't do that it is justice for people to reap where they have sown it is justice for people to see the fruit of their labor okay we are going to do this because of time here is how you operate it first of all this is how satan escapes how he escapes is that he masks himself Whenever he comes and steals, you don't end up identifying him. That's why most of the time he's not attacked. Because he marks under five things. The first thing is that he does his job and puts the blame on God. So, you know, last year and the year, a lot of you have been blaming God for what the thief did. That's how he escapes. He blows that smoke screen, escapes. And then, you know, and you stay there. You know, Job's, Job, Job's wife said, curse God, and what? Die. His friends came, and we're all saying all kinds of things about God. God becomes the corporate where Satan did his bad job. You see, spiritually, he has not been identified. He will keep escaping. Because you can't go to court now, barrister, and say, uh, they stole my car. The court want to you to help them identify who that's why even the police can't do much until they can identify the once they cannot be identified there is no case it's truly an injustice but there's no way he must be caught he must be found if you catch him red-handed doing it that's even more deadly you can kill him but apart from that is he said why men sleep the enemy comes to soldiers you see he's a very wise thief number two the second thing he does is that every, anything that represents God, he accuses that thing. Because he comes back to tell you they are the ones responsible. So normally your pastor, the church, and all of those spiritual, whatever, he will come and put the blame on it. So you see people who are angry with the church. <laughs> you see a lot of them angry with their pastor for what the devil did. Certain strategy is that each time he wants to destroy somebody in the body, he gets you into offense with the authority that covers you. It's a principle. If it is not cause God and die, it will be ah, oh, oh, pastor. Ah. Then he will steal you dry that year. That year he will have nothing to block him. He will just be doing over time. If I share this open in your meeting, when in maybe in an evening session, and ask for response, you will see that more than half of the people have been robbed. 
even here now how many of you truly can say what so well so this guy dealt with me oh, i need vindication let me see your hand up to half one time i had to do some auditing and i saw where ah meal oh. just one time the holy spirit said yeah my friend sit down look at what is going on and you are just running up and down ignoring it but i put my foot on the guy i said maximum by third month <laughs> i collected back more than 80 percent of so he accuses the third thing is when he can't accuse god maybe you are too you you absorb god of blame <laughs> the third thing is he will accuse the closest relationships around you that's why you see the man blaming his wife for his woes or the woman blaming the husband or they are blaming their some blame their father some blame their mother the man that sent you to school but you're blaming him for all your woes because if he work hard enough he will be like the other man's father who has made provisions you know what is going the devil got him blind accusing his father while he was busy in his vineyard you see some it starts quarreling in the family strife within the marriage because others who are not running families like that will start accusing their fellow laborers it caused so much stress in job's life adam said it was a woman you gave me and other and i was doing that instead of catching the real thief so at the end of the day it's not only that we have lost this and that relationship suffers more because of the frustration i want to end it with this one because it will, it, when the devil can't get you to accuse god spiritual all the powers that represent god or institution like the church and he can't get you to accuse your close relationships he will tell you to blame it on circumstance so he can still escape he tell you, you know you know it's because there was no fuel in the car that was why by the time you were you know it was because of this the car now did this and tumbled into that bush and caught fire he just wants to find explanation for you to explain away what happened ah you know it's because of this and that 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 happened that's why each time he attacks job he will leave one person to come and tell a story ah some man robbers were passing and they attacked you each time he said ah it's fire 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 so we can say saying it's fire where did the fire come from he said ah some wires sparked when you were in church and then your whole house burnt and all your properties got lost because there's always explanation because whenever a spiritual power is to get something it will leave a mark some mark in the natural for you to explain it away and that's what keeps happening then when he can't get you to blame circumstances he finally turns the thing on yourself and he gets you to blame yourself and people get into self-blame self-condemnation if i had done this if i do and they stay there and all of that the thief escapes and goes very far satan has succeeded in getting people to shoot themselves with the weapon they arm themselves to shoot him he turns the accusation on them and tell them you are that's haven't you heard people commit suicide people blow up their head people do other how come the weapon is to be used on the enemy when the enemy has gotten the man to use it on himself self-condemnation guilt they live in that and the devil escapes there is a spiritual thief behind all the bad things that are happening to you there is a spirituality behind some of the losses opportunities relation that has happened to you things will not change till you put him under control and you can check him you are given the power to do it i have shown you that he has no basis for what he's doing but you have right to stop him but if you don't stop him he will keep operating first you identify the thief secondly if there is any area you 
needed repentance I repent before God not before Satan you don't owe him anything then you can demand for restitution from the court of justice now let me tell you a secret whenever you have taken away what belongs to God you need to restitute to God so Satan can restitute to you because the law of restitution also works for the Lord I don't have the time to get into that how many of you have read about Malachi chapter 3 he said return unto me that's restitution that's talking about and I will what return unto you the reason is because whatever we take from God the devourer takes from us if you remember when Adam took what God told him not to take Satan took away his dominion Satan became the God of this world that was Adam's dominion that he collected whenever you steal from God Satan gains an opportunity to steal from you so the law of restitution states that you restore to God what is his and Satan is forced by divinity to restore to you what is yours then right after that we now said you mr thief in the name of jesus christ number one i command you to desist for your works and maneuver i command you to stop every interference in my finances this thing that you have done that 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 we put an injunction on you today and it's not just a one week injunction we obtain an eternal injunction against you you can never interfere again you have the right number two father we demand for justice look at what happened look at what happened look at look at all the damages we suffered here i demand for justice and for this thing that we lost i'm asking for maximum restitution god is a just god and let me give you a secret when it comes to restitution that's where tears work with god i don't i don't do cry much with god but if need be i do it i've learned that a lot of judge uh, 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 a lot of law lawyers that are very good in their profession sometimes know how to add emotion and empathy in closing their case there's a level they can argue this thing and they they they, they now you know i've watched some of them there's a way they they they, they can fill a courtroom with emotion as they finally plead a case and make it why this boy should not be denied justice and some of them we even connect it to other people that have been suffering that if this court fails to do justice remember the millions of nigerians have been going through this this thing will keep on going that this court should set a precedent and they just you know tie it up sometimes there are some arguments that finish like this there is silence in court the jury is just trying to recover their emotion i have actually watched some of them especially when you have a few females in the jury you know women are richer in, you, you see them almost hold back they just manage to hold back their tears meanwhile it's a judge oh. you can imagine when you move a judge like that he's going to deal with that guy the opponent the, the guy better have another good lawyer that can dismantle all those things you have created in there because it's rainfall his judgment oh, is about to fall like rain you see we can so argue it this boy was abused when he was small his father left him and nobody and he was in the street let all of us let all of us here put ourselves in his position a three-year-old boy in the street what else will he learn and this boy said the towels and others so they picked him up and started teaching him that's how he grew up this way and there are a lot of young nigerians because of the irresponsibility of parents irresponsibility of society irresponsibility of our government to provide basic education your honor please consider this look at at the age of 70 he is caught with this fowl or chicken what is what is how can a young boy that should have been in high school now finish school looking for a job look at what he's doing with fowl what is he doing with fowl your honor realize that it could have been you it could have been any of us and all of that ah, ah. this is justice has demanded that he should be this guy i just if the other lawyer doesn't know what he's doing and doesn't show enough evidence or whatever because as they are listening they're making some notes and they're going to base their judgment on some of those key points 
that's where God said, plead your case. And when it comes to restitution, there are some times he said, call for a solemn assembly. Let the priest come to the altar and weep. Joel chapter 2, you can see. Before he said, I will restore to you the years. He, he asked the priest to come, bring repentance. Come and bring weeping. Come and bring that. And said to the Lord, look at the condition of your people. Ah, he said, then the Lord will be jealous for his his anger will arose. Do you have some justice you want from heaven this morning? First of all, keep one hand up. If there's anywhere you have operated this law on the negative side, where you are on, on playing the role of the thief, the role of the destroyer, I think you just ask God, you know, just please, in the name of Jesus, Jesus has become my vindication, has become born my sin. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. So I want, as I put this law into motion, nothing can interfere on your behalf. If you know, you use it. Uh, can you imagine somebody now is believing God for a husband? Will you destroy the chance of another girl getting married? Uh, all the cries she raised to God, don't you know that it works against you? So you say, Lord, forgive me. It's only God you owe. Apology. Ask him to forgive you. Sometimes you need to ask people. Sometimes you need to ask people. But ask God to forgive you. Ask him to forgive you. You can get the restitution if you can repent. Because repentance is the first law of restitution. Repent that times of restitution, times of refreshing may come to you from the presence of the Lord. You are in a glorious year. Nothing must go wrong this year. That's why God asked me to come here now. Father, any area, anyone here has also touched the negative side of justice. I ask because of the blood of Jesus, because of the lamb that was slain, let mercy be released to them. Let mercy be released to them. Let, let judgment be stayed. Let the hand of judgment be stayed. Maybe whether they destroy other people with words or whatever. Whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Or they don't the one that could incur judgment. Let, let judgment be stayed. Let judgment be stayed. Because of the blood of Jesus. Jesus has been judged for us. Jesus has borne our punishments. Jesus has borne our causes. Jesus has carried our souls. Let vindication come to them. Let mercy come to them. Let mercy come. I thank you because you are not only just, you are faithful to forgive and to absorb us from all blame and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Whatever it is that could work against their own destiny, against their own future, seize their soul, the harvest is coming that is negative, even if it's not yet here, let it be heard back right now. Let mercy intervene to overturn whatever it is. Mandaba Shokono Bosuendele Vienda Kosovo on behalf of the church I also stand to bring atonement. I bring atonement on behalf of the church in Abuja, on behalf of the brethren, on behalf of the pastor, on behalf of the whole pastoral leadership, on the pastor, on all the workers, all the cell leaders, on behalf of every family, every husband, on behalf of the wives, on behalf of the children. We remove every legal ground that the enemy can have to cause havoc this year. We bring repentance. I even stand here to bring identification of repentance on behalf of the whole brethren in Abuja. Even the ones that have violated certain things without understanding what they are doing. Even the ones that, whatever it is, will bring repentance on their behalf. We bring repentance on their behalf. We bring the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary. As an atonement, as an atonement, not one of them will face judgment this year. Not one of them will fall on the negative, the wrong side of, of the equation because you put us on the side of the blessing the causes have been put on christ we have been put on the side of the blessing i transfer all of them to that side where blessing is what they are going to assess this year the blessings of abraham the blessings of jesus christ the blessings of the new covenant is what they are going to assess nothing will be stagnant in their life this year because of your mercy nothing will fail to work this year we open up the door of mercy we open up the door of grace we open up the door of restitution we open up the door of increase we open up the door of multiplication 
those things that have been started in the way hindering prayers hindering progress hindering we bring repentance and we clean them out of the way those obstacles that have been on the way creating all hindrances why prayers will not be answered why things will not go well we bring repentance i even bring repentance on behalf of families even transactions that have happened in families even even ancestral sins and whatever we bring repentance on behalf of this thing and now by the blood of jesus we close up the gap we bridge the gap we make up the hedge on behalf of your people we make up the hedge now i ask in the name of jesus christ that they will move into a season of restitution a season of restoration when the enemy will have to give up on their case when everything they have lost will have to be restored back to them in the name of jesus christ lift up your hands and ask god for justice ask god for vindication ask god for restitution it is your right your blood bought right it is bought for you by christ on calvary they took your opportunity and gave to another person you are going to get a new judgment there are certain people that are due for promotion this year nothing can hinder you again ask god it's time for restoration it's time for you to move forward you are due for promotion in your job you are due for another level in your business you are due for another level in your ministry We obtain an injunction against Satan. We obtain an injunction against the powers of darkness. Father, we decree today in the name of Jesus Christ with that anywhere anyone has suffered injustice, their right has been robbed. What belongs to them have been stolen. Opportunities have been stolen from them. I command double restitution. At least double restitution. At least double restitution. At least double restitution. Hallelujah. Job chapter 42, verse 7. I just want us to pray on that. There's something there you need to see. Project it. 42, verse 7. One of the laws of restitution, there is a seed that goes alongside with it sometime. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the termite, termite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against your two friends. For you have not spoken of me the things that is right as my servant job you know these guys were the ones accusing Job of all sorts they were his friends so in the midst of all that he was suffering i told you that the one of the third area the devil takes it in is relationships around you, you just start scattering everything you be laying blame on each other and leave the devil the next verse therefore take unto you now seven bullocks seven ram go to my servant job offer up for yourself a bond offering my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after you are fully, in that you have not spoken of me, the things that is right, like my servant Job. There are sometimes a little seed here and there can do a lot of wonder. There are several laws of restitution. This is just one of them. But here is another one that I want you to see. Yes? Go on. This is on behalf of this man, oh, but I will show you on behalf of Job. Eliphaz determined these guys did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted Job. Okay, go on. In other words, you know, there are some areas of restriction. I they need to go, you know, just pacify. He did so much damage to somebody. Just need to. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, but the Lord turned the captivity of Job where he prayed for his friends. On the part of Job, when did his captivity turn? What is the law of restitution here? Is forgiveness. But this guy said a, a lot of stuff to Job and he was very bitter. Very. God was showing him, you're not getting out of your problem till you release others. And you see people, they broke their heart, they did this to them and all that. You see some of them. Restitution doesn't give you what you used to have. It gives you double at least. Isaiah said, it will give you double for your trouble. 
so when job prayed for his friend the lord gave job twice as much as he had before go on and then came unto him all his brethren his sisters and all of them that had been his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house they bemoaned him comforted him over all the evil that the lord has brought upon him it's not god it's satan anyway every man also gave him a piece of money everyone an earring of gold you see what forgiveness can do he opened the door for all this to sacrament go on the next verse so the lord blessed the latter end of job more than his beginning for he had fourteen thousand sheep that's seven thousand was what he had before the wahala six thousand camels a thousand yoke of oxen a thousand sheep as it's gone he had also seven sons and three daughters gone in all the land there were no women found so beautiful or fair as the daughters of Job. their father gave them inheritance among their brethren you know girls sharing land and property with boys god even took time in how pretty these girls were going to be just to make sure job is paid double for everything and look at the last one after this job lived 140 years this is from the time of noah's flood man's lifespan had been reduced to 120 but they had to give him enough life to enjoy back i don't know what you have lost what you have suffered what it is whether it's time you're going to get at least double food of it I, i'm sent by god for this thing listen my friend i'm not here to excite you i'm not here you're going to get double food what it is it's only you that can say stay stay you are going to get a double a, a bigger me they broke your heart the husband that is coming now when you compare him and that one that left that will be no basis for comparison are you hearing what i'm saying lift up your hand what you're going to do now is Satan. you've been talking to the lord you've been dealing with forgiveness but now i don't know if there is any where where you need to release somebody this person did this this one did this then lord I hand it over to you. I'm, I'm removing. You won't find me in bitterness again. You won't find me complaining again. It's true that I was. You won't find me bearing grudge again. I release all these things out of my heart. I'm not going to let this thing block what you want to do for me this year. I release this man. I release this woman. I release this man. I release him in the name of Jesus. I release them. You know how to take care of it. I release them. I release them. Because you can see that Joe's friend had to repent. It doesn't mean that if job releases that they are free if they don't repent on their own end they, they still have their own problem to face if they repent good but release them for your own good release them i release whosoever i release i clear my heart of every form of bitterness every form of unforgiveness every form of you know animosity every form of, i clean up everything whether it's against your wife or husband or mother-in-law or whatever i don't care who i clean up I empty my soul. Lift up your hand. Say, Lord, 2010 has finally come. This is my year of grace. It's also my year of restitution, my year of restoration. Now, Lord, I've been blaming all that people for what the enemy did but standing before you today you have helped me to identify the thief i know that he has been the one manipulating things against me lord today in the name of your holy son jesus christ whom you raised from the dead i ask for vindication i ask for an injunction against satan I ask for a decree to be passed on my behalf for restitution in all things in the name of Jesus I take up the authority that you gave me in the name of Jesus and bind you Satan all of the forces of darkness all the contrary spirits all the powers that came against me I command you to be bound we bring injunction against you in the name of jesus you cannot interfere again in my life you cannot interfere again stop your works and maneuver 
in the name of Jesus I command you to stop interfering you have to be specific if it's in your relationship if it's your finance wherever they've been interfering command them to stop interfering command them to cease from their works we bind you Satan we bind you over the finances of Abuja church we bind you over the growth of this church you cannot interfere again we bind you over the brethren we bind you over their finances I release abundance to them I release restoration to them I release increase to them everything you have stolen we demand for double at least double restoration everything you have stolen all the pain you have caused we demand for double restitution we bind the oppression of Satan, meddling with your relationships, breaking up every good relationship that is trying to start up in your life, interfering with it. When somebody promises you something before you matures, the enemy will come and abort. We command you to stop in the name of Jesus Christ. That spirit that is causing confusion in your marriage, causing confusion in your family, we obtain an injunction against it. We decree that you cease from your works and maneuver. Satan, take your hand off God's property. Stay away from these people. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Isaiah 61, verse 6 and 7. We're going to pray that. And that's the last prayer I pray for today. Every morning, I'll be sorting out one thing. Yeah, the, the Lord told me there are people that have been robbed cheated out many times here yeah, but you're going to see how these things are going to fall back into place this year the spiritual thief is the first thing you take care of every time you want to begin restoration look at it verse before is six first before seven you shall be named the priest of the lord men shall call you ministers of our god you shall eat the riches of the gentiles in their glory you shall boast yourself you know when it comes to financial restoration look at verse seven he said for your shame you shall have double for every confusion you suffer you shall rejoice in your portion therefore in this city of abuja in this land of abuja you shall possess double and everlasting joy shall be unto you now now lift up your hands and ask for minimum of double restitution that you want minimum of double minimum of double minimum of double you have between double and sevenfold minimum of double minimum of double restitution in the land minimum of double in this city in this land of abuja every loss opportunity everything that i've slipped away from my hand i ask for double restitution i demand for double restitution on behalf of god's people i demand for double restitution on behalf of the church in abuja i demand for double restitution on behalf of everyone here i demand for double restitution Akabako, Kiekeles, Kiekeles, on behalf of every family here, I demand for double restitution. Let the angels of God move forth and cause it to come. Let them go forth now and cause it to come and begin to gather back the harvest of your people. Begin to gather from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Opportunities for your people. Kandobo Robo Sandalaya. Have you been impacted by this message? Please share your experience with Pastor David Obweli. Email address Dominion Image Media at yahoo.com or call 0792 6879 0803 435 0803-590-9900